Well, uh, ring ring. Well, just so you know, I'm also recording with a new little camera. How's that? It's a little vlogger. I'm I'm vlogging my negotiations. Uh, ended up getting oh. a at the hotel. Believe it or not. That's cool. All right, ring. Uh, it's no ring ring. Uh, I, I'm on the Zoom. All right, I'm logged oh. in. I just jumped on the Zoom. Hey, Dan. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is Yuchin, and uh, it looks like you've been on our website and applied for uh, uh, for for the promotion or the look at the ad yeah. about the, the sales training, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, it looked look, it look pretty cool. Yeah, fantastic. What, um, I guess, what attracted your attention uh, in the ad? I mean, uh, greed? Fuck. I'm, I mean, sorry, sorry, my language. Uh, I'm a salesperson. <laughs> I get a little too comfortable. Uh, yeah, I just want to. I want to increase my sales. I mean, isn't that what? Uh, I mean, I'll, yeah. I mean, so just just need some more money. I want to make some more money. I want to be the top guy here. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Um, and you know, it, perhaps it, it may be appropriate if we uh, ask each other a few questions to uh, to see if we could possibly help you. Would that be appropriate? Yeah. I I mean, I don't really have any questions at the top of my head, uh, but if something comes up. Uh... Okay. Well, I guess, um, you know, what are you doing now to, uh, you know, when you're selling, I guess, kind of, um, you know, what's what's your method? Have you, you been trained or you're just doing it, you know, off your cuffs? How, how do you approach sales? Yeah, you know, I've just been uh, basically copy pasting my, uh, my coworkers, whatever they're doing just try to do the same thing and not you know rock the boat here um because our sales manager i'm not saying he's a micromanager he, he's all about us doing what we want to get the sale uh but yeah i've seen that there's certain certain ways uh, that sales are done here and so i've been kind of like walking that straight line until you know, until you become like up there, you, you really can't, um, there's not much flexibility. Okay. And so, yeah, if I can learn some ninja stuff where they won't even know what hit them. I see. Way to the top. And then, um, yeah, so I like, you know, I want to learn about this. Uh, like I said, but if it's too out there, I, I don't know if I'll be able to implement it at work without my manager, sales manager flipping okay well i guess um in terms of sales what kind of uh sales closing rate uh, ratio are you having right now well the other most of the people there are at about 22 percent um which is you know that's pretty good i mean dang i'm like 85 percent Sorry, you're five. Five is still good. Five is five is the average. Uh, you know, five to fifteen is average. Uh, and then where you want to be at, where you you know you feel there's no worry about being let go in the safe zone. If you're in the twenty to twenty, uh, anything above a twenty percent ratio, you're you're golden here. All right. Oh, okay. Well, I, I guess um, you know you 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 got five percent closing rate. Uh, right now um do you uh on the bad month on the bad month uh good month. month i can do 10 well okay it just depends on my mood it, you know it's a, a lot of a lot of these sales stuff depends on uh on how you're feeling you know uh did you have a good breakfast did you have coffee you know like all these uh, you know i i do the i try to do the, the five minute medit mindfulness thing you know uh yeah, so on a good month, when I'm feeling in the zone, I can do 10, 15. Okay. Okay, that's that's not a problem. And the, how long have you uh, have you been uh, involved in sales? Uh, it's probably sales. like 13 years. On, on and off, part-time, for majority, you know, going through college. And now, in the last two years, I've been full-time. Uh, so for the past 13 years, uh, your closing percentage had been five to uh, to 15 percent. No, it was always uh, 
it was always under 5%. I was more like, um, you know, just like a college student, you know, mm-hmm. close a few deals here and there. It would be like, oh, beer money. You know, it was no stress. Uh, I was getting GI Bill, so I didn't have to really stress on sales. Now okay. that I'm doing it full time, and I'm not getting any money to go to school. It's really on me. And yeah, I stepped it up a bit because I'm full time now. I was mm-hmm. hoping to be at the 20 percent, like right. from going part time to full time. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's well, I guess you mentioned that the the closing rate is like 22 percent, which is good. Um, and and yours is like five to fifteen, well, I guess. Thirty percent ones are rock stars. Uh, there's maybe two or three, two guys in the office that are above a thirty, and that's like, gosh, they're here forever. You know, you can't even look at them. <laughs> you, yeah, exactly. Thirty percent of the rock stars, and right now you you're sitting at about five to fifteen percent. You know, why do you think that is though? Uh, I think because I'm Mexican, I, I don't know. Uh, but then there was a black guy who's doing really good. So then I'm like, well, it can't be because I'm Mexican. And I'm like, it's probably my teeth because uh, they were crooked. So then I got braces. I'm like, that'll, that'll do it. Uh, you know, I read something that uh, salespeople with good breath close more deals. So I'm like, yeah, straight teeth, good breath. I'm going to go from 3 to 30% like that. With covid no one can even see my teeth. Uh, so that kind of messed up my plan for success. Okay. It's like you're yeah. getting a boob job, you know, and then the strip clubs close and now you're sitting there with big tits and no customers. Okay. So crooked teeth, uh, nice breath, good mood, and that would get you to 15%. It didn't. Uh, all right. Well, you know, how, how do you think, uh, you know, what's the difference between you and, and, and the rock star? What, what, what do you feel is the gap, though? Well, I really think they enjoy uh, sales. You know, they, they make it enjoyable, whereas for me, it's like, you know, I just, I just got to make some money uh, for for them it's uh for some of them are like well i'm not smart enough to do like what my buddy does who has an audi r8 he sells he has like internet business with web pages and has people overseas and he goes like yeah he's super smart uh he's one of my million dollar clients and i'm like why don't you do that and he goes like no i'm not that smart so i don't i just sell real estate Uh he does pretty good in real estate okay well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, realistically speaking, in the next three months, uh, where do you expect your sales uh, to be? Well, these next three months are critical. This is the spring market. Spring markets. Yeah, for real estate, spring market is when everybody wants to sell sell their home. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, all I got to do is make some calls. All right. Well, I guess at this stage, do you, uh, do you like your sales process? Well, I, I kind of don't because it's, you know, uh, not really mine. It's more like my coworkers and the last two sales managers combined. So it's, it's like a Frankenstein thing. What don't you what don't you like about it though? You know, one of them is follow up seven times, as in like if they don't pick up, like just keep calling them and reaching out. I'm like, I think three is enough. Okay. And from looking at the research, yeah, more than three doesn't. It's no difference. Uh, oh. Nope. So there's that, and then also we got all these scripts. And we don't even have like a real sales presentation thing. The top guys don't even use a presentation. I don't know how they do it. They just like, their clients just trust them. All right. And they just sign the paperwork. And I'm like, what the okay. heck, you know? So yeah, so the follow-up times and uh, just the presentation thing and scripts. Oh, is there anything else you don't like about it? 
Ah, uh, there is. Yeah, you know, they always want us to get reviews. And so you gotta like put on this smile, like. Why, why, why you don't like it though? Well, who wants to be judged? Okay. And it's, and it's on the internet forever. You know, so I always I always freak out. People are like, yeah, I'm going to leave you real. I'm like, no, don't. <laughs> gotcha. Got the house. <laughs> Go enjoy it. <laughs> don't think about me. <laughs> Just send me a referral. Wow. Well, uh, it sounds like you're um, a little bit frustrated by the, uh, by the sales process currently in place. Um, is there anything you would change about it if you could, though? Yeah. I would just uh, we just get the numbers, call up to three times. And when I get them on the phone, I would use some, some ninja skills, like whatever I feel like saying. I don't have to like use a script where it okay. feels more natural. Get the okay. appointment, send them over the paperwork and get the listing. Yeah, so get the numbers, call three times, and use the, the, the ninja skills. Well, um, why, is, why, is that, um, uh, why is that important to you now, though? Well, now I got a kid. No, now it's serious. You know, I'm not a college student anymore. That, mm -hmm. you know, some extra money goes to beer type of thing. Okay. Well, it, it sounds like it's, it's affecting your, your personal life, and uh, uh, it well, became... Yeah, I don't want to go work at a factory job. Okay. So I like dressing up. I like talking on the phone. I like cool headsets. Okay. I like, you know, and also when you're up there, you get treated differently too. Mm. Well, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what I guess, what, what has stopped you from, uh, from getting when, where you're looking to, uh, to go though what's prevented you in the past to make that change i guess so much bureaucracy okay and so much regulation and always like always like walking on eggshells and as far as like the sales business um you know i i, I can't talk about crime i can't talk about race i can't talk about sex ethnicity he's got like the list goes on of all the things I'm regulated and mm -hmm. that kind of um, been using it towards my benefit now. But yeah, the whole it's it's I cannot get rid of that. However, um, I'm starting to find ways around it. For example, if you're on the do not call list, I cannot call you. However, I can text you. And if mm -hmm. I can text you, I, I'll send a bomb bomb video. Mm. And that has been getting great responses. And then I sent then I send the, the link to my um, calendar after the bomb bomb. Then I'll send a link of a 3D tour of the shit we do. And yeah, it's effortless. I've been finding that's a lot easier. You know, just finding ways around regularly. I have to get creative now. I didn't think sales there was much creativity. Uh, but now I'm starting to learn that. The line is too long in the front. Try to pay the bouncer in the back to the back door. And if that don't work, get in through the window. So okay. That's why I'm here with you uh, because it, uh, you know, your ad kind of says that, I mean, it doesn't say it directly, but from what I've read, uh, the feeling I get from it is with, uh, if I learn your strategies, I'm talking to folks or whatever, um, my sales will increase. So I don't know if you're talking about everybody's like, oh, I'm selling a CRM and I'm kind of hoping you're not. I mean, you've asked me some pretty good questions. So now I'm really curious, like, man, I hope you're not just trying to push a CRM on me. Like that's going to solve it for me because I tried them all. I tried six CRMs. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's important uh, to you to bring CRM up, and we can definitely talk about this a little bit later. And before we do that, um, you know, in regards to, to sales process, have you been uh, have you been out there looking for anything that would uh, get you to like twenty to thirty percent closing rate? 
Oh, that makes my palms sweaty thinking and saying it. Um, just make more calls. Okay. More natural, might be more organic sounding. Um, know when to close. I think mm -hmm. I've been told sometimes I try to close too fast or it took forever to, I should have closed it a mile ago. Uh, so knowing when to close it. And that's, yeah, I mean, I, you know, so it, to think about the phone calls, it really depends on what side of the bed I wake up on. It really depends mm -hmm. on what I ate. Depends on what time I went to bed last night. I mean, there's about like 20 factors that'll determine if today is a day for 50 phone calls or five phone calls. <laughs> you know? Right, right. I'm not in control of those factors. Well, that's that's interesting. And, um, you know, like, I guess, how do you see the benefits of uh, you actually solving this problem so that you can get to 20 to 30 percent closing rate? <laughs> we have Patricia. <laughs> Yeah, I put it on nods. If anybody wants to join us, you know, more the more okay. brains and ears, the better. Yeah, then, so I guess, uh, how do you see the benefits of you actually solving this problem? The benefit, uh, clearly, more money and more respect at the office. Okay, more money, more respect. Well, what would it do for you personally? Well, make me a great father, husband, brother. Okay. As a provider. So I guess what's uh, what's preventing you from changing the situation? Well, that means I'll have to work more. And that's more time away. So I will be exchanging time with my newborn with time with probably people I don't really enjoy being around for money. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a conundrum, you know? I'm going to go spend more time with strangers to make more money so I can spend more time with my, but then all my time was spent with, you know, so it's like a, it's like a catch 22 there. And so I think for me personally uh, would be to focus ideally, uh, if you're not purchasing something over a million dollars, it's going to be, you're going to be tougher to finance. So it's going to be more work. So, uh, and less money. And so last year, I did do top producer for rentals, not not that big of a payout. And this year, I'm like, you know, I worked a lot. And okay, like the pay wasn't nothing to write home about. So I told right. the broker, I'm like, hey, look, I'm folk, I'm shifting. Stop giving me these, these rental clients. I, I don't want to, I don't want to look at one. If they're not buying something over a million or selling something over a million, don't run it by me. And if you're not giving me more, I'll find somewhere that gives it. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not playing around. Yeah, I already closed almost a million dollar transaction just this month. So they, uh, they know this guy's not messing around. Mm. Well, it it it, it sounds like uh, if you achieve this uh, closing raise to thirty percent, it might mean that you're going to be away from your kid and then from your family uh, making money. Um, right. So what I'm thinking maybe if the, uh, the 5% I'm closing now, if, if I just, um, if they become more valuable clients, they can equal to 30, 40%. So it's not just the percentage, but what they really, really at the end of the day care about is um, closing amount. Mm -hmm. that's what really matters uh the percentage wise okay so what if so what if you close 70 percent that guy next to you made triple what you made and he only closed 10 percent so well, yeah it's it different. can be kind of embarrassing being the guy that closes 70 percent and makes less than this guy closing five percent okay well i guess kind of 
realistically in the next like three six months uh how many um how many sales are you you know looking to make realistically well what i did this month uh times three every month i'm comfortable with uh the higher end stuff now and i already got okay. another one lined up from my boss um so you you know you tripling your uh your sales in the next three to six months i mean how 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 how, how would your life look different than it is right now oh way better um what way better because you know with kids just random things come up and i don't want to have to check the bank account yeah yeah I want you to want take the care of it right then and there and you know it, it kind of concerns me uh, when i look at my coworkers. it's like should they all have a baby to uh really step on the gas like i am because i feel like i'm stepping on that gas hard and i'm seeing it and then you know i saw your ad i'm like well if, if that can augment what i'm doing why not mm -hmm. I'm, and i kind of still don't know what what it is that you do um Ask me all these great questions. Like, are you trying to? Are you selling the CRM or uh, what? Like the overseas assistant thing? Are you trying to get me to buy an overseas assistant? Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for action. Well, uh, for asking. Well, you know how um, a lot of sales professionals are struggling to uh, uh, to reach their goal and their potential. And uh, what we do really is we help people like that. Um, you know, increase the closing percentage, and uh, uh, you know the the, uh, the clients get the higher caliber clients, so you can get uh, so they can get more revenue. And yeah, I mean, uh, then uh, you know, I kind of I kind of hate to ask you this because we're having a nice conversation here. Yeah. Uh, but what if you can do? What if you don't do anything about this problem and your situation gets even worse? Now, like I said earlier, I don't know if you were listening to me. I will go, I'll have to end up working at a factory job or a cab driver or some shit like that. I, I don't. Okay. Like, yeah. I, it'll pain me to be driving a cab or at a factory knowing that I could have made $300,000 if I would have just picked up the phone more. If I would have just said, you know what? Who gives a fuck what my mood is today? I'm just going to make those calls. But in reality, Eugene, like, man, sometimes life just knows how to put you between a rock and a hard place and say, yeah, yeah ooh, I got to tend to that or else uh, I won't feel good and I won't make good calls. And my client will hear you know, that come out of my, you know what I mean? I start making all these stories up that makes sense. Uh-huh. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, I'm fighting those inner stories, excuses every every day. Well, yeah, it, it, it sounds like there is no way you're going to go back to the factory job. So time for a change, possibly? Yeah, I mean, it can happen. Uh, I came pretty close. And that tax bill came. Ooh. Yeah. Well, I guess how, how important is it for you uh, to change your situation uh, and start uh, and start uh, you know getting or tripling your sales in the next three months? Well, that, that's happening now. You know, I'm already I'm already tripling from last year. Just worry that I might trip on my own shoelaces. So if you think there's anything I need to do to tighten up those shoelaces, yeah, I'm all ears. <laughs> I mean, everybody tells me good things, you know, uh, like, oh, stay positive, this and that. Then I'm like, yeah, but you're not really looking at my shoelaces if they're tight. Let's wrap it up here then, uh, because we're kind of all over the place right now. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a a mock scenario and so on. Um, it's 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 a little bit hard to aim for specific things because um, you know you have to make up a lot of things. It's not a real <laughs> not a real scenario, and these questions are kind of deep. 
Um, yeah, I guess how did you uh, how did you feel to going through the process? It, that was uh, it's pretty cool because it had me really curious on what you do, and you know you deflected it pro you deflected it nice and continued exploring more about me, which you know that's everybody's favorite radio station, right? WTTI. And so I wanted to reciprocate, and, and you know I was like, what what do you do? I'm like, oh wait probably going to sell me a CRM, probably going to sell me an overseas admin. That's what every call has been about. And, and then I think uh, the aha moment, and I wrote it down, is um, actually if that, if that was part of your call, that would have been cool where you said, you know what, it seems like we're all over the place here. Um, it triggered a thought. I was like, oh, yeah, you know what I, I need is an accountability coach. I am all over the place. I need somebody to keep me in one place, succeed, and then say, all right, time to go to the next phase, the next place. Because, you know, I'm worried if there's no accountability. As you said, the loss aversion is I can go back to driving Uber or working at a factory, even though I was great at both during college. It's just not somewhere I want to be. Yeah, and I mean, this, this, this whole process is designed to, to lead from the beginning till the end. So uh, from the, if you look in, looking at this NPQ question, the stages of it, right? In the black book of questions. So there are like stages. So there is a connection questions, situation questions, problem awareness questions, solution questions, consequence, and then basically qualifying. So we went through the uh, problem awareness questions when I asked you uh, some of the questions and you gave me a like, oh, I've got this closing percentage from five to 15, which is eh, so, so because normal closing, closing ratio is 22%, but the rock stars get 30%. Uh, so that, that's kind of the gap that, um, you know, I was trying to explore if, you, if that's what you wanting, like getting to the higher closing percentage, is that the problem? Then we dive into the um, your the process, and it's like ah, I, I don't enjoy the process too much. Don't like the sales process, and you said that because because it's it, you know I have to follow up sometimes, you know, uh, yada yada yada. Then I ask you, oh, what would you change? And you said, well, you know, the numbers I would only call three times. I would have some sort of a ninja skills, and the things that stops you from 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 calling three times and get numbers and ninja skills is the bureaucracy and and you felt like walking on shells um so uh, from from that point it kind of got sideways because ideally we would need to zoom in on those things and to pull out what stands behind it like what are the emotional drivers there and how it affects you right and what would it mean for you to change on the personal level how would your life will be different if you would you know get the solution in place. Um, so because we were all over the place, it, it kind of didn't make sense to go to uh, like qualifying question, transition questions and, and so on. Uh, so I think that was pretty cool, especially exploring the problem, uh, problem awareness questions and um, solution awareness questions. See what I just uh, uploaded there. Uh, we can talk about that in a sec. Patricia. Hey, is your mic on? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, good morning, I'm listening. What'd you think? I didn't, I think I came in a few minutes late. What was the, what was the premise? What was the scenario or is this real life? Kind of, um, so. Uh, Eugene was just, uh, let's say he's, uh, he just posted an ad. Anybody looking for, you know, sales to improve their, increase their sales percentages. Yeah. And so I clicked on it. I set up a discovery call on his calendar. And during the exploration, Eugene learned that increasing my success percentage doesn't really mean shit. What really matters is increasing um, 
the value of each client. So somebody that does 5% doesn't mean they're doing the worst in the company because that 5% could be nothing but million dollar clients. Right. And my 20% could be nothing but hundred thousand dollar clients. Right. Uh, so, so yeah, in, in a way it was kind of interesting. Uh, it's like you, you wanted to sell the higher conversion. And I'm like, you discovered that through these questions, uh, the methods of asking all these exploration questions that that's probably, it got all over the place because uh, you, you didn't want to close on that because it's not, it threw them off a bit. But then again, towards the end, from all those exploration questions, you know, I was like trying to figure out what he does. And then during that process, him trying to figure out where I'm at and what I've done, I came to my own solution, which would be, I think, what I need is an accountability coach. Um, yeah. So then, so then Eugene didn't like continue. He didn't try to close anything with you because along, along the way, he realized you probably wouldn't be a good fit. Yeah. Yeah. So in increasing my percentage won't really do anything to my bank account. Right. Got it. Yeah. The, the thing is, there is this uh, specific sales process that we were exploring right now. And Patricia, well, what do you do for a living? Just so that we have a context. I'm a journalist. I'm a filmmaker. I have a documentary that I produced that I'm in uh, in the process of selling. But at the moment, we're in the film festival circuit. So um, it's not quite as a heavy load as production. I don't have all those uh, um, um, you know, tremendous expenses. It's staggering. I mean, just thinking about it in my mind just goes into spaghetti mode. So it's not that. Um, but there are some expenses. We're going to France for a festival. We're going um, traveling to Sonoma. Um, so, you know, there are travel expenses and things like that involved. Um, and then the selling part will come as I begin to try and find a distributor. So um, I, I do these calls. I'm learning, you know, so I can better represent myself and have more meaningful conversations around that process. Yeah, so th this process that we explored, it's, um, it's basically a sales process or sales framework. And within the sales framework, you're not really pushing a product or a sale. You kind of, um, you constantly qualifying. You see if there is a sale to be made at all. And through this specific framework, you guiding a person through stages so first of all, you have to figure out what is the situation like? What is the situation that they're facing? What are they doing now to, in this case, to get sales through the doors? What are they not doing? The, then it's a problem awareness, like how aware are they about the problems and what kind of impact it has on that person or in their team, right? Yeah, yeah. Why, yeah, and why do, you, do they think that is? Why, do, why, why, why this problem is, is there in the first place? Once this is explored and um, the whole premise of this, and you, you know this, Patricia, you're very, very experienced in negotiation. We don't, we don't make decisions based on logic. We, we make decisions emotionally. Right. So the, the, the whole premise of this, you have to pull out the emotions. You have to dig deeper to understand what the problem really means. Right. So once we go through the problem awareness uh, yeah, stage, then we go to the solution awareness to figure out what they already tried, what worked, what didn't work. And also figure out, they have to figure out what, what the solution would mean for them. Like how would it change their life in general, right? What would it what would it do for them, for them, for the family, for the company, whatnot. So that's a, a third stage. The fourth stage is the consequences. So what are the consequences of not doing it? Right? Um, right. What are the ramifications of, of just staying uh, at where they at? Like, how, how is this impacting them? How long are they able or then able to just stay where he's at? Right? And then the urgency, why now? Right? Why, why change now? What's the, why not wait for another 12 months, right? So you kind of building an urgency and figuring out what would be the consequences of, of them uh, changing the situation. 
And only then you have like a qualifying uh, stage, like how important is for now to change? Why is that important to change now? Right? What would, what would happen if the change would occur and so on? And only then the last stage is really the presentation stage. Because, you know, in traditional se uh, selling methodology, they constantly saying, oh, you have to have a great pitch, slide deck, you have to have like presentation skills. But um, you can just email that. Uh, I email a project proposal. There you after go. The discovery. There you go. And uh, you know what? What uh, best salespeople say, and I've been studying them for quite some time, is that the best method of persuasion is when your prospect persuades themselves. So what yeah. you're doing, what you're doing really, you're guiding them to the realization that they have a problem. There is possibly a solution and the cost of not solving this problem is much greater uh, you know, than, than just staying where they at. So it becomes a dialogue. Right. And through, through your strategic questioning, asking right questions and the right sign, you're able to lead your prospect to persuade themselves into you know, enrolling if you can solve the problems, of course, into your enrolling into your program, into buying your product, and so on and so forth. I gotta jump on a company meeting in three minutes. Yeah. I do yeah, want to give you some valuable negative feedback. Oh, please. Uh, when you said, I hate to ask, um, I think you just flipped that to, you're probably gonna hate me for asking. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, yeah, there that's, is a reason why I didn't I mean, do that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure you had a reason. I'm sure you're aware of it. And so, uh, I, I, yeah, that that was a, uh, but it, it landed right. I was like, no, go, go ahead and ask. Like, you'll hate to ask a question. So it, it worked out. Um, when you said not, what are the consequences of not doing anything? I felt right there you weren't listening because I told you earlier. Um. And so I, so I, I put on there this uh, frontiers of labels thing, but the way to use it is juxtap juxtapose uh, the differences between environment, purpose, behavior, identity. Uh, so example, I want to identify as, uh, as the guy who brings the big deals to the office, as the, as the big man. Um, so there's my identity, right? This uh, provider and closing big deals my behavior is that it really depends on my mood and so right there you had an opportunity to say hey look uh you need an accountability coach uh to straighten your behavior because that's reflecting on your identity uh and so environment and purpose is another uh look, what's your purpose well to become the top well how's your environment you know, uh, if you notice how I said in my sales office, the environment isn't very uh, synergy. There's, I, there's literally no synergy in there. So you could have been like, you know what? Uh, you need a different environment, uh, X, Y, Z. This thing has been coming so powerful. If you find people contradicting those two things, uh, for you, it'll be easy because uh, you know a lot about environment. You know environment has a big influence on your success. You know, beliefs and values are great and capabilities. So like I even said on there something about um, my capabilities and beliefs and values. But the question is the way you asked it. I mean, overall, if it wasn't for your style of questioning and your tone, you would have not have gotten all those beans spilled out of me. Uh, so then, yeah, it's just, uh, I guess the important thing is when you get those beans, beans to spill, are you collecting them? Are you sorting them? Are you, uh, Pasha does, Pasha calls them keystones. They'll be like, oh, that's a good little nugget. I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to address it later. I thought you were doing that. And then you asked me like, what's the purpose, you know, of not doing anything. And I was like, you didn't say that keystone? <laughs> like, I got kind of upset. But then that could be a good thing, right? You know, like, I'm, a, and you could be like, what? Well, sounds like you're upset that I didn't, that I'm not your assistant taking notes for you. You know what I mean? Like you could have, you could have flipped it to work for you too. It's genius. It's good. 
Mm. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, for me personally, I just try to get off the rails and just follow the framework without any additional of negotiation tactics. Um, so I, I really just try to zone in of this, and that's that's perhaps why apologies missed a lot of these things because you know I kind of tuning into the to the next questions to ask and yeah. how to do it. Yeah, so it takes practice, right? Um, and um, I really like this framework because it's coming. It is coming from empathy standpoint. Like this is this is all about them and their world and how they see the problems, how they see the solutions, what are the, what are the ramifications, and you exploring that rather than pitching or presenting a solution or saying how great this or that is and how how it will change their lives. Um, anything I'm waiting for info. I'm sorry, Eugene. This uh, thing. Uh, uh, thing kicked off here. He tries us. No worries, then I've got to, I've got to run too, so I appreciate uh, jumping in today. And, uh, you know, we'd love to kind of give the, the, the favor back. And you said that you have another framework, so we could try that too. Uh, yeah, let's, let's um, you know, I, I posted this on Nod right away, and I'm glad somebody jumped on. Thank you so much, Patricia. Um, yeah. And, and let's do this again, Eugene. And yeah, um, I think the more folks, the more brains that are listening, you know, they're learning and they get to give feedback is phenomenal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Daniel. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you guys. Yeah, have a good day. You as well. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.